Hugo's Hugo Alfredo Taliak's lying face down for more than an hour. At one point, someone even comes out of a building and snaps a cell phone picture. Moments later, another person shakes him vigorously. When he doesn't respond, that person moves on. Firefighters showed up 15 minutes after responding to a 911 call, but by that point, it was too late. Taliax had already died. Now, Dr. Cheryl Paradis, psychologist and professor at Marymount Manhattan College, joins us to talk about this video. Dr. Paradis, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Thank you for having me. Well, we know New Yorkers are tough, yet they've been known to help someone out in distress. What do you think happened here? Well, I, I think it is a very disturbing video, but I don't think the video tells the whole story. I don't think New Yorkers are any more callous than other people. I think what happened, and this is what psychology research has shown, is that uh, it was an ambiguous situation. It wasn't clear that Mr. Teliax was injured. I think he was lying on his stomach. My, my viewing of the video is that the people didn't see any blood. They didn't realize he was so injured that most likely they thought that he was someone who was homeless or drunk and that New Yorkers unfortunately we have learned to ignore some of this and I think that's one of the things we can learn from what this tragedy is is that there's too many people that are sleeping on the street and that New Yorkers are overwhelmed with all that we've seen and that we have learned to walk by. Maybe we are a little desensitized. As soon as I heard the story, the first thought that popped into my head was the Kitty Genovese effect. 1964, she was stabbed to death in Queens, made national headlines because many people saw and didn't act, and it's cited many times in psychological books. I mean, do you think that's what happened here? People think, oh, this city is so crowded, someone else will help, or I'm afraid to do something about it. Well, I think just like what happened with Kitty Genovese is that it wasn't clear that she needed help. There were lots of bystanders, but they, they didn't understand what they needed to do, and so many of them did nothing. But it wasn't that they were cold or callous people or that they didn't care. In psychology books, you cited a study, several actually, where if one person helps, there's a herd mentality and other people will help as well. If those people had been in groups, do you think the story would have ended differently? I think it might have ended differently. Uh, all people, not just the people that pass by, we have a tendency to model our behavior after other people. And if we think no one else is helping, then we start to doubt whether we should be helping either. Uh, there's also something called diffusion of responsibility where we think, well, someone else will help. I don't, it's not my job. And I think that what happened with this gentleman was that people didn't know what to do. And if you watch the video, uh, people, uh, a few of the people stopped. They, they looked confused. They came back. It was just that they didn't know what to do and there wasn't anyone there to model the right behavior for them. All right, so it just takes one person. Hopefully this is a wake-up call. Dr. Cheryl Paradis, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. That was enlightening. All right, Brett Michaels remains in critical condition tonight.